Hi, and welcome back to Mrs. T's Chem Talk Regents Review. This time we're going to do the reference tables, tables H through M. Looking at table H, just make it a little bit smaller. Table H is going to show us the vapor pressure versus temperature for four different liquids. And if we're looking at table H, we can also find out something about the boiling points of the substances. We can find out about their different intermolecular forces as well. So if we look, for example, at propanone versus water. For propanone, for propanone, we can see <clears throat> that at standard pressure, which is 101.3 kilopascals, the boiling point for propanone is less than the boiling point for water. Because if we use the vapor pressure we know that the vapor pressure has to be equal to the atmospheric pressure to boil. We look up the vapor pressure on the chart to find out the boiling point at that atmospheric pressure for the substance. So propanone has a lower boiling point than water at that pressure because its temperature that it lines up with is lower. That would mean that propanone has weaker intermolecular forces and that water has stronger intermolecular forces when compared to each other. We can also use this chart in order to determine the normal boiling point. Whatever temperature the substance crosses this line at is the normal boiling point because the normal boiling point is defined as the temperature at which the vapor pressure equals the atmospheric pressure, and for normal boiling point, the atmospheric pressure is 101.3 kilopascals. The other thing that we can do with this chart is that we can just find boiling points at different atmospheric pressures. So for example, if we want to know the boiling point of water, which is Try that again. If we want to know the boiling point of water at 50 kilopascals, we're going to look and see where water's line crosses 50 kilopascals. And a note to keep in mind is that on the bottom for the temperature, we're going by fives. This is 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. On the y-axis, it's going by tens. So this is 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Be very careful when using this chart and note that the scales are different on each of the two axes. Moving on to table I. Table I tells us the heats of reaction at 101.3 kilopascals and 298 Kelvin for different reactions. And if we look at all of table I at once, we have certain divisions within table I. And those divisions include, for the top section here, these are all If we go here, up to here, these are all combustion. So these are heats of combustion. Remember, combustion is combining with oxygen. And when you combine something that is a hydrocarbon or something with C's, H's, and O's with oxygen, our two products will always be CO2 and H2O. And since combustion is burning or exploding, these are all going to have negative values for their delta H because they are all exothermic. We know they give off heat and light. The next section 
all of these from here up to here are synthesis, right, or combining. Uh, some of these are positive, some of these are negative, uh, but these are going to be combining reactions or synthesis reactions. And at the very bottom, all of the ones that have H2O combined on the, or H2O on top of the arrow, these are heats of solution. Each of these is what happens when we dissolve. So if they ask you about something dissolving in water and how much heat is evolved or absorbed, we're going to look here. Another very important piece of table I is that it says down here, the table H values are based on the molar quantities in the equations. And what that means is that if the coefficient here is a two, that means that this heat value is for every two moles of oxygen. If we wanted it for one mole of oxygen, we'd have to divide the heat value in half. The other very important piece of table I is that it says a minus sign indicates an exothermic reaction. So remember, any of the values that are negative, which, for example, all of these are, that means that those are all exothermic reactions. So anything with a negative is an exothermic reaction. And remember, that means that the potential energy curve looks like this, where the products have less energy than the reactants, and energy is given off overall. And if we wanted to write this, we would write the heat or the energy term on the product side when there is a negative delta H. If we go to table J, table J is the activity series and it ranks from most active to least active for both metals and for nonmetals. Remember this is the chart that we can use to determine which elements will replace hydrogen in acids. Any metal that is above hydrogen on table J will react with any acid to release hydrogen gas. Any metal that is higher than another metal will be able to replace it in a single replacement reaction. Any nonmetal that's higher than another nonmetal, more active than another nonmetal, will be able to replace that other nonmetal in a single replacement reaction as well. And remember, for more active metals, these are going to be most easily oxidized. And for more active nonmetals, the higher up they are, the more easily reduced they are. Moving on to table K. Table K is a table of common acids. We can find some of our acid formulas on table K. If you ever have to look for an acid, remember usually an acid is going to either start with H, but sometimes they also end in COOH. For our table L, um, oops, sorry, going back to table K for a second. Our common acids, also remember, will have H plus as the only positive ion in solution. If they are Arrhenius acids, they will tend to have a low pH. Acids are also electrolytes, meaning that they will conduct electricity in solution. For table L, which is our table of common bases. When we're looking at table L, we usually for a base will have a metal in front of OH, but again remember NH3 is also a base. Bases have OH- minus as the only negative ion in solution. Bases will tend to have a higher pH, and bases are also electrolytes, meaning that they will conduct electricity in solution, again due to the mobile ions present. And the last chart that we're going to do right now is table M, which is the common acid base indicators. And remember these indicators, the colors that we see over on the side, 
The first color is what we see before the first pH. The second color is what we see after the higher pH. And the combo color is what we see in the middle. So at the middle range for methyl orange, you'll see orange. For the beginning, before 3.1, you'll see red. After 4.4, you will see yellow. The only exception to that is for litmus. Litmus, in order for red litmus to change blue, you have to be higher than 8.3. In order for blue litmus to change to red, you need to be lower than 4.5 if we're talking about litmus paper. If you are also looking at this for phenolphthalein, colorless would be lower than 8, pink would be higher than 9, and that, remember, is that deep dark pink, and in between from 8 to 9, you'd see a light pink color. So those are our indicators for acids and bases. I'll be doing another video about the next few tables shortly, and I hope you come back and check it out.